Brent Porcio at topvelocity.net. Going to do pitching notes here, Connolly. Going to pair him up with Bob Wheatley. Coming out of leg lift. Okay. You can see Bob comes out of leg lift. Good, aggressive move out of leg lift. I can see here with Connolly. Good, aggressive move, but a harder lean and earlier arm cocking. So when I mean harder lean, if you see Bob right before his lift leg breaks his front hip, we can see Bob's still chin just behind right uh, belt buckle. We can see Connolly is really far leaning back. So you can counter your own momentum, meaning when you lead through your hip, if you lean back in the process, you can counter, almost cancel out that momentum, meaning the movement to this point, if you, if you lean back just as hard against the hip, you're still in a balanced position with not much momentum moving forward. So like Bob here leads with the hip, a lot more energy moving here than leaning back because he's not leaning back as hard. So he has more in momentum in his body. So he keeps riding that, and before leg drive is here, now Bob had tight hips. He could have gotten even lower, but still good job of getting linear off the back leg before leg drive. And you can see Connolly here, very good job of getting linear off the back leg. It's just Bob's going to have more momentum at this point because he didn't do that hard lean back. And a lot of times, too, when you don't have a lot of momentum, you cock early because you're not really creating a lot of power through your lower half, so your arm has to get up early to start help generating that velocity. So ideally, you don't want to cock that early. So if you watch with Bob, he breaks his hand as he starts to move down the mound, just as you do, too. But he's he's a little bit slower with timing or bringing his arms into the cock position. He's taking a little bit longer, okay? You're quick to bring those arms up. Not only that, you go into a hyperducted, abducted position, which this is where it can lead to shoulder impingements, specifically as you start to throw harder. We can't let the elbow get above the shoulder. Notice how he's keeping his elbow below, and then at front foot, he starts to bring it up, okay? And he he's just... He's delaying the arm longer than you are, uh, mainly because he's building good momentum. So there's something where, how do you fix this? Well, you try to you try to keep your elbow above your wrist, and you hold that position before you really want to throw it up because the, the timing is right at front foot strike. That's when we go into a cocked position. And you can see you're, you're in a cocked position right now, and you haven't hit front foot strike yet. So it's too early. Once again, it's going to the timing, which comes to the energy in the body, which you have kind of stalled out your momentum a little bit. So you can see Bob carries that momentum, and he's able to drive, and he gets his hips to open. They could open better, but like I said, he's got pretty tight hips. But what he does is as his hips are open, and he maintains that closed orientation really well. So you can see when you go to front foot, you do a great job driving and extending and pushing. It's just because your momentum was stalled out, when you go to drive, it doesn't power your hips that well. So, like I said, Bob's hips are a little, not could be more open. Your hips are completely closed. And that's because when you went to drive, you didn't have a lot of momentum. You also didn't uh, time the opening of your front foot to your drive. Well, actually you did. I, you, you open your front foot here. It's just when you go to drive, you, you trigger it at the right time. It's just not powerful. So it's not a timing issue. It's just a power issue. It's having more momentum on a leg lift. And when you go to drive, you can get more power through your back leg, back hip. That brings your back hip around and you get more hip rotation. So because your hips are late and your momentum is more than likely poor due to the initial movement, your trunk goes early. So you see your trunk get out early before the hips come around in rotation. You can see Bob's hips get open, and he's still maintaining his trunk back and closed, and then everything goes forward. Your trunk is just slightly ahead, and we see your arms starting to slightly drag uh, as you finish and to release. Okay? Similar finishes, except Bob extends his front leg better. You don't. So it just comes down to an athleticism issue I'm seeing. I mean, you can definitely work on not leaning so far back at a leg lift. Uh, to counter your hip momentum and then work on delaying your arms for arm cocking um, but we need more leg power 
A lot of times, too, you won't counter back and lean so far back when you feel more powerful with your legs to ride your momentum and, and power that momentum through your leg drives. But that's uh, your, your, your biggest issue. It's just getting the front foot with this kind of hip-to-shoulder separation, not like you where your trunk's a little forward, your hips are late, um, and, and then therefore it messes some of the kinetic timing or sequencing up, like your arm dragging some. Um, and your front leg not even still driving, which could have been uh, another big uh, support of velocity going forward. So I really like what you have. I think it's very impressive for your age. You just now have to step up the athleticism through all the lifting and training that like we do with 3X pitching uh, so you can start to move more power and get these uh, segments to initiate better to improve the timing as you, as you uh, power the kinetic chain.